This is one of the simple demos that describes the product called CAD Lab, which is essentially a bridge between MATLAB and SOLIDWORKS. What I have here is MATLAB on the right hand side and SOLIDWORKS on the left hand side. Now, what I'm going to do here is from M, using this M script, open a part in SOLIDWORKS and change it around a little bit. Then I'm going to open an assembly and again change the assembly around a little bit. I hope that this is going to give a idea about the product. Now CAD Lab is based on the new object-oriented MATLAB paradigm. So everything in CAD Lab is uh, M class. So for example a SOLIDWORKS part is essentially a part class in M. So let's run this script and step through some of the interesting lines of M code. There is a class called CAD Lab Initializer which starts SOLIDWORKS and returns a pointer into this variable called app. Now you can see that app itself now has been filled up and it's got interesting variables like frame height, left frame state and so on. If SOLIDWORKS was not launched, it would automatically launch SOLIDWORKS. So now let's see things that, for example, app can do. So if I did app dot frame, let's say frame height, it's saying right now that the frame height of the SOLIDWORKS is 1150. Now you could do something like you can say frame height to be 500 and it's going to immediately change the SOLIDWORKS frame height. We can put it back to 1150 again. This shows you that the pointer that app has, or app, this variable, is a live pointer to SOLIDWORKS. There, there is a, a live connection. So let's now open a part and manipulate it. The next few lines I'm going to specify a part in a string and I'm going to call this method called open doc. So open doc will open the part and pass a pointer to this variable called part. As you can see the part opened up. It's a simple cube with a few chamfers and a few holes just to make it look interesting. Now what does this variable prt contain? Now if you look at it in the workspace you can see that it contains mass, density, surface area, CG, principal inertia, a whole bunch of other things. And again, this is a live pointer to the part. Now let's cut a hole on this surface. So I'm going to run through this few lines. As you can see, it selects the plane, puts a sketch, and cuts a hole. You can see that the hole has been created. Now the next few lines is going to create a circle, circular hole. And again, you can see that the circular hole was created here. What essentially is happening is I'm picking a geometry or picking a plane in this case and calling this command called create rectangle, which actually creates the rectangular sketch and then cuts it. Now, one of the more common questions is how did I get these numbers here and here? Well, I obviously didn't ream it up. Well, in this case, since this demo is very simple, what I did was I recorded a macro uh, in, in SOLIDWORKS and just cut pasted those numbers. Now since we have cut these holes, let's see what happens to the data that is in the PRT variable. We will find that earlier on the mass was 9.898 uh, whereas right now it's become 7.82. In other words, since it's a live connection, the data is always the latest information. One of the very important use cases this particular live connection is that if you're using a model-based design paradigm, you could have a PRT dot mass, for example, as a variable in either an M script or a simulink block or maybe in a state, flow chart, state chart and that model would always represent 
the latest information of the CAD model. Now let's change the color and transparency of this part just because we can. Um, now the next thing we'll do is open an assembly and move some of the parts from MATLAB. A lot of times users have uh, simulation data in MATLAB but the true representation of the mechanism is in SOLIDWORKS because that's where typically people design these machines. Now without CAD Lab this is usually a challenge to use that simulation information in MATLAB to simulate or rather animate the parts inside SOLIDWORKS. Uh, what we're going to do right now is open an assembly and animate using two simple for loops. Uh, here you can see that it's an assembly with the same cube, just twice. And what I have is a simple for loop that is going to change the transform of these cubes. I've already got the 4x4 of cube 2 by using this command called get transform. And now I'm going to just do sets. First I'm going to translate it and then I'm going to rotate it. So as you can see that it's very trivial to take information from MATLAB and do animation in SOLIDWORKS. Essentially here it was just a set transform. That brings us to the end of this demo.